I can't talk, but levels look good. Hi there. So today I am going to show you how to get started with creating generative sequences on the electron model samples. Uh, this is going to heavily use the conditional triggers uh, function, and it's one of my favorite things to do. So first off, uh, let's talk for a minute about what is a generative sequence. Well, a standard sequence would be uh, a series of notes that are repeating over time, and a generative sequence would be uh, something in which the notes are changing over time, but they're changing due to different kind of rules or conditions or uh, different feedback loops. So basically what we're doing is we're programming the device to sort of write its own music, uh, or it's going to create a loop or a sequence that is going to change over time in ways that we aren't directly controlling. So it's, uh, it's like setting up a set of parameters or a set of rules and the device always has to follow those rules but within those rules uh, it can kind of do a lot of different things. So it's, it can be a bit random, a bit probabilistic and um, it's something that I think the electron model samples really excels at. Uh, this is also something that you could do on any other electron sequencer um, or any sequencer that uh, offers probability and conditional triggers. Okay, so this is just a, a blank uh, patch here. Just got the default kit. Um, so I'm going to start by just finding some different samples to use. I think for now I'm just going to keep the, uh, the standard bass drum. And I'll find some other stuff here. Oh, uh, a little trick that I just learned. Um, when you're browsing for your samples, you hit the sample button, and then you press and hold back and it jumps you to the root folder, uh, which is really nice. You know, so it doesn't matter how deep you are in some folder, uh, pressing and holding the back button jumps you right there. Okay, so I've got my empty sequence. I've got some samples loaded on here. By the way, we're also starting with just the, the basic kind of 16 steps um, for now. So I'm just going to put down your standard, uh, you know, four on the floor kind of beat. And let's maybe tweak that a little bit. So let's start with this. Um, I think I'm gonna even slow it down quite a bit. Let's go down to let's go down to 80 BPM. Okay. So first, just starting with you know the super basic beat. What can we do with this? Um, well, one thing we can do is just set the chance on each of these uh, so that right now each of these is set 200%. Right. So they're gonna fire every time. Let's just change all of them at once to 80 percent. So for the most part they're gonna play it's just gonna kind of randomly drop notes. Alright so we'll start with that. Um, so now on track two I've got my snare sound. Let's do something here. Um, let's see I think I'm gonna go for like a, I don't know just going to try something, something like this. Okay, so let's try that. So now um, I could do the same thing and just for now let's just turn the chance down on my snare track here to something, 67. Okay, so we've got a bit of randomization there. Um, and now let's do 
let's let's add a retrig in here too. So let's see. I'll try this one here. Retrig on. And I like to mess with the length and I like to make them fast. Let's try that. Whoops. Wrong button. Okay, so I'm sure you can hear that. Um, it's still dropping snares, but every time it plays this particular one, trig eight here, it's uh, playing that, that fill, that retrig. So, <clears throat> um, okay, now let's see what else we got here. That sound. I think I like that. So, so these are the lowest notes. I'm just going to tune this whole thing down. Um, how do I do that again? <laughs> oh, that's right. That's per trig that you do that. So I'm just going to pitch the whole thing down. Minus 12. That would be one octave. or something like that. Okay, so I've got that. Now, let's say I want to do some conditional trigs on this too. And let's see, let me listen to just this. Okay, so this ending is pretty boring. Okay, I think this one, 11, could use a retrig. Uh, make it short again with a fade. Okay, I guess good enough for now. Let's see what's on here. Oops. Okay, I think I want to try this whole sweep kind of thing with this. 
so. Okay, so right at the beginning is when I want that to fire. So, um, let's go into the uh, step sequencer or grid record mode. And uh, so I want this one to fire on the first one. Um, but I don't want it to be, you know, C5 is always, or sorry, the default note on here is always number nine. I don't want it to be that. I want it to be up from there. So I'm going to go, whoops, not velocity, keep that. Raise this note up to, does A sound good? Yeah, A sounds okay. Okay, so now, so this first one, it's gonna be an A, and now the next one, it's gonna be just half step below that. That was an A seven. Oops, so we're gonna go G sharp seven, and so instead of rolling through it each time, what I can do is just take one, copy it paste it, and now in this one I just roll down one. And then the same thing again, copy, paste, roll down one, copy, paste, one. So just keep repeating that for as many as you want it to do. So the problem was I just went too high for this sample, it can't go that high, so I'm just hitting the max each time. So instead of A7, I'm just going to change this to A6, six, and then do that process again. Down one, down two, down three, down four, down five. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, let's turn these back on, see if that sounds good. So that sounds good, um, but we don't want it to happen every single time, right? We want this to happen just once in a while. So here's where we get into kind of the logic chain thing, which is fun. So in the very first trig, so I've got this this chain of six trigs, right? The very first one, I'm going to give it some percentage chance of happening. Um, let's do eh, 75 is too high, probably. Let's do just 50 percent right now. So half the time that'll fire. Now, um, this one, I want it to only fire when this one fires. So I'm going to set it to pre, previous. And then next one, same thing. Each, each of these subsequent ones, I'm going to set to pre or previous. So they only fire when the previous one fires. So now all these are connected. So basically, I think of it as just kind of one trig now. There's just this one that's going to fire 50% of the time, and then Anytime this one fires, the whole chain will fire. So let's hear that. So it's happening every time now, just by chance. There it goes, skipped one. Yeah, just a 50 50 chance each time if that happens. Okay, what's our next sound? go for something a little different here. Um, get another Heinbach in here. Actually, yeah, this one. So that's a pretty great bass sound. Maybe I don't want it to kind of repeat like that, so I'll just turn my sample length way down. Make it kind of... Okay. 
Okay, let's try that. That's probably fine. Let's just do that. So let me mute all these real quick. Just listen to that. Cool. So there's my baseline. Uh, so what can we do with this one? Okay. So what I'm hearing is in this little section here that I have blank trigs six through ten. Uh, I'm going to see if I can add a little like high frequency roll flare kind of thing that's going to not happen every time. So uh, let's stop you. So first I need to take this and pitch it way up. Let's just see what it sounds like at the max uh, 24 or two octaves up. Yeah. Cool. So let's just do that. Uh, or actually, I'm just going to use copy paste, copy paste, 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 paste. Okay, so remember it's 6 through 10. Okay, but I think I want them to do an ascending thing. So that uh, highest pitch will be my last one. Then each one of these, I'm just going to turn it down here. Go like this way so you can see. Just do one semitone down. So this one will be 23, 22, 21, and 20. And now I could have done the same thing basically by turning, you know, what note it's playing, but whatever, that's fine. Okay, so that's cool. So now I've got this little chain kind of within my larger bass line, 6 through 10. And again, I don't want it to happen every time. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Uh, my first trig, 6, I'm going to give it some percentage chance. Uh, let's do, yeah, it's too low, 33%, one, one third of the time. And then each subsequent one I'm going to set to pre or previous. Okay, let's hear that. See, so when six triggers, all the rest of them trigger. Which only happens a third of the time. Cool, I'm liking that. Um, let's maybe add another, like a random little retrig or something also. So I think I want a retrig on 15, but again, I don't want it to happen every time. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add it on 16 and then use nudge to get it real close. So add the same note, that's just my default note. All right, now I'm gonna use nudge 
to back it way up. So it's just just barely after that one. And then let's turn on a retrig for that note. And let's do it again kind of quick with a fade. And something fast. Oops. Let's try that. Yeah, perfect. But again, I don't want this to happen every time, so we'll give it some sort of parameter. Well, here, let's, yeah, no, no, let's just keep it simple. Let's just give this some percentage. Uh, 41%, sure. So what would be really cool is if I could tie this one to this chain right here. Uh, as far as I know, you can't do that, or at least I haven't figured out a way to do that. The only way to tie things together requires adjacent trigs. Um, however, we could have a bunch of adjacent trigs that are all silent, kind of link bridging the gap there. So here, let's just, for example, let's just do that on track six here. Um, so this is our our sound. It's a pretty long sample. It's a very long sample. Um, so let's do... Yeah, what does it sound like? That's pretty neat. But let's, uh, let's do what I was just talking about and having a bunch of blank ones. So let's say I have this fire on the first the first trig and then uh, I want it to maybe fire again on, I don't know, say the twelfth trig. And I want these two to be connected, uh, even though there's this big gap in between them. Well, what basically what you have to do is fill in all these, but set them all to volume zero. Another way would be to uh, to parameter lock the the cutoff to be all the way down. It'd be the same thing, really. You're just turning the volume down. So now let's just hear that as it is. Oh wait, I still have. Sorry, let's turn that off. Okay. So now we're hearing just track six. Okay. So you see they're cutting each other off, which maybe I don't like. That's okay. Why don't we just change the start point of this sample in general, make it a little later. I want it to start more on the tones. Yeah. Right there, just on one. So here's the problem, right? The second one is immediately cutting off that one the first one. Even though it's silent, it's still, because this is monophonic per track, uh, it won't sustain the note all the way through. So that's a, that can be, you know, used to your advantage if that's what you're trying to do, but uh, if you want to sustain a long note, you can't, you can't use this little trick, basically. Um, but I'm just going to live with that. And I think I want to, because it's cutting it off like that, I'm going to do this. I'm going to copy this one. And I'm going to put it in here a couple times. One, four, maybe seven, and ten. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, that might be cool. So, what else can I do with this? Oh, yeah, so I wanted to link all these together. <clears throat> so, what I wanted to do is set the first one to be some uh, percentage. Let's make it, uh, yeah, let's just do 50-50 again. And then each of these subsequent ones is going to be on pre. These are all the silent ones, remember? Um, but, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to do all of them on pre and make another big long chain. 
Come on, where are you? There. Okay, so now that whole chain is all tied to this first one. The whole chain only fires when the first one fires, uh, which is 50% uh, of the time. It's so here how 12 here, it gets to play out until one fires again. So if this one doesn't fire on the next go round, then 12 gets to play out the full sample length. If it does fire, then it cuts it off. Um, so again, try to use that to your advantage. Um, let's uh, just unmute things and see where we're at. actually sounds uh, a lot better than I was expecting it to. Um, so let me listen a little bit more and see if there's anything else I want to do to this. I think the only thing I want to do is just kind of mix the levels a little bit. Um, I think the snare is a little bit too loud, so let's just turn it down a bit. I'll just do this live while it's playing. Air a bit too loud to me. Okay, cool. Well, I hope that was enough of a, a starter um, to get you going with this. Obviously, there's a lot more you can do, a lot more complexity, and I'll try to expand on that maybe in a, a future video or two. Um, but it's really fun. Um, I think that something that's worked well for me is having a few tracks, maybe one, two, or three tracks um, that are pretty steady um, so that your brain kind of has something to latch on to is like the, the meat of the song. And then you have the rest of the tracks as this kind of generative sequence uh, just to create fills and variations and different different interesting things that happen. Uh, so hopefully I demonstrated that well enough. Uh, all right, thanks.